Hi, my name is Kaisa Johnson. I am an artist and I am also a longtime member of Artists for Democracy. And I'm going to be giving you a studio visit, um, talk about my work with Artists for Democracy, how I like to be civically engaged, um, all of that good stuff. I'm coming to you from my garage, which has become my makeshift studio since we've been um, on lockdown. My studio is in Vernon normally, and it sh uh, has like individual units, but shared airspace. Um, and that seems like a little bit too much of a risk for me. And also my kids have been home from school and, and my husband is working full time from the dining room table. So <laughs> need to be on call and present. I make drawings and paintings and installations and they're all based on scientific imagery. I work in series, so for each series, I, I find some kind of natural micro alphabet that becomes my lexicon with which I build larger drawings and paintings. One of the alphabets that I have been using since I was in art school and first sort of married my love of science with my work as an artist is particle decay patterns. And those are the signature pathways that are made by unstable subatomic particles. So, you know, inside there's the protons and the neutrons and electrons, but then there's all of these other subatomic particles. Um, and those, it, either through collisions with other particles or just through um, their lifespan, will decay. And when they decay, they decay into more particles that make up the same charge and mass as the original particle. So each one of these is an individual decay pattern. And when I use them to make drawings and paintings, um, I keep them intact and then I layer them up over and over again to either create other imagery at a compositional level or originally I was just using them as marks to make paintings and then I sort of evolved to use them to make up other imagery that related to them in some way conceptually. I just recently had a show in Houston, Texas um, at a gallery called Nancy Littlejohn Fine Art. The sort of thesis of the show was to look at oil and this sort of at this you know billion year view of how it came to be, how this substance that has transformed our culture for good and for ill, uh, mostly for ill at this point, um, where it came from. And, and that this thing that is sort of like almost a manifestation of like greed and corruption and environmental destruction, like we bring that to the substance that is natural and neutral in its base state. Like it's not oil's fault, oil's kind of amazing. It's, it's also about transformation. Well, I think the most obvious one is that I am home and working from my garage. I also really miss the community of the people that I would see every day and, you know, be able to check in with about my, you know, what I was working on or talk things through with. Um, but I feel like I've also found an expanded community where everyone is feeling this need to reach out and connect with each other. And so in, in a way, I've actually broadened my connection because I feel like I've seen people virtually that maybe I wouldn't have been able to see as easily in person. As artists, we respond to the moment that we're in, um, drawing from the outside, from history, from the present, from politics, um, and then synthesize it and try to put it back out into the world in a way that poses questions um, and makes people maybe think about things and um, our place of humanity in time and space in a new way, hopefully. I have done a lot of overtly political work in the past, um, especially in a period like right after the financial crisis, I was doing all of these large scale installations and wall drawings. I did a solo booth project for the Armory show, like sculptural installation, based on the corporate offices of the Bank of America 
a waiting room. And then I painted it all in chalkboard paint, and then I drew over it this amalgamation of the ruins of Rome, the Piranesi, and then particle, particle decay patterns were the individual marks that made up these larger images. So I was interested in this idea, like these levels of collapse, this physical collapse through the particle decay patterns, historic collapse of the fall of an empire, which I was feeling very much that we were on teetering on the brink of. Um, and then the institutional and systematic collapse of the um, economy through terrible systems and bad laws. Shortly after that, I did an installation in the Hamptons, um, in East Hampton, that explored income inequality and how income inequality had grown. And I did that visually through exploring the change in housing in the area from the town that houses the home sweet home house, the be it ever so humble house, there's no place like home to today where Ira Rennert's mansion is the largest and most expensive house uh, in the United States. Um, and, and that sort of manifestation through housing um, reflects this manifestation in like the gross uh, imbalance of wealth in our country and in the world. Artists are uniquely positioned um, to help manifest political and societal change because we are good at problem solving and we are also used to creating something out of nothing. And that is an amazing skill. And we're also able to see like big pictures and big patterns and connections. And I think that that is really important in political change in understanding like a multitude of things and that actually you need a multitude of voices and a multitude of actions um, and a multitude of different kinds of civic engagements to make real change. Oh my gosh, we need to do so much work. I like, what the heck? I had ne again, speaking to my, I'm so, I feel like, su like such an idiot that like I wasn't aware of the, these true histories, like, and because especially like white people and white artists have benefited from these systematic inequalities, whether we were cognizant of it at the time or not, it is our responsibility um, to make space and to amplify voices of people who have traditionally have been left out of the conversation and to step back and, and, and allow there to be space for other people. And then also to work to dismantle these systems through protesting, through voting, through calling representatives, through writing letters. Um, I really hope that at every level, these tiers of systems, right, will transform. Things are gonna be more online. There's gonna be less art fairs. There's, there's gonna have to be this transformation. I hope that it, it becomes less about this like blue chip and auctions and like more about like what change can this make? What can this, how can this reflect the world that we're in and the world that we want to exist in? You know, I mean, that's what it, the magic of art is. And that's why that's the thing that lasts, lasts through history is culture. That is how we understand the past. And that is how the future will understand us. And so we have a responsibility to reflect that and, and make it meaningful and important. Thank you for coming to my Artists for Democracy talk. <laughs> um, I'm Kaisa Johnson. Please go vote. Yell at your council people. Call and email your representatives. They will do what you ask.